Greetings, everyone, and welcome to NASRA's inaugural webinar, which is the first of many to come. We are so excited to be with you. I'm Travis Doherty, and I work as the manager for Maryland Relay. I am truly looking forward to sharing a newly emerging technology with you today, a revolutionary one for our industry. That technology is real-time text, or RTT. Please allow me to introduce my co-presenter for today's workshop, David Bahar. David? Hello, everyone. I'd like to introduce myself. My name is David, and I look very much forward to speaking with you today. I'm the director of TAM, TAM. We handle both the Relay and the, American, the Maryland Accessibility um, Telecommunications Devices Equipment Distribution Program. Excellent. Thank you. And we're so excited again to provide this educational opportunity. So to get us started, it's just a very, very exciting time for us. We've been through some huge changes. Now, when we're talking about RTT, real-time text and what we're coining the real-time text revolution. Before we move forward, I do wanna provide you with a quick overview of Zoom. If you go up to the top right-hand corner, you will be able to click on view. If you click it on gallery view, you will be able to see the PowerPoint presentation as well as myself. In between those two screens, you will see two small white lines. You can toggle back and forth on those white lines to adjust the size of either the PowerPoint or myself. So very excited to move forward with this presentation. Okay. So this is our agenda for today. I'll give everyone a second to read that. So these are all the things we're planning to cover give you a little bit of history about the TTY up until the present day and what we can expect moving forward in terms of telecommunication technology. Feel free to put any questions you have in the chat box. We will be holding those to the end of the presentation. We're expecting the presentation to last approximately 30 to 40 minutes, and then we will be saving time for Q&A at the end to provide any clarifications on any questions you might have. That'll be the interactive component of today's talk. With that said, let's get started. So you notice the decline in minutes there. This is a summary of some data, but I'd like to give you some anecdotal examples from my own past, my own history. I would say it was probably the early 90s when TTY was very, very well known within the deaf community. It was very, very popular. It was pretty much the champion of access to everything that we had at that time, access to hearing family, friends, businesses, restaurants, interviews even. Everything, every opportunity was hinged on that. Relay made things, made telecommunication accessible. I remember my first experience with it. I went to the Florida School for the Deaf and Blind. I was a middle schooler at that point, and I wanted to order food from Domino's. My favorite thing to order was thin crust with pineapple. I know it's a crime, depending on your point of view, but that's how I like my pizza. At any rate, it was so significant to be able to have full access, to be able to do that myself independently. And now you see this reduction in TTY minutes. We're going to explain a little bit about the rationale and the reason for that moving forward. Next slide, please. I'll give you a second to read that. So, as I mentioned, Relay was the mainstay for many, many years, but then with the advent of additional technologies like Motorola, Sidekick, so forth and so on, I'm sure some of you remember Sidekicks, people were able to communicate in different ways, which no longer necessitated the use of TTYs. Then with the advent of VRS technology, which allowed us to communicate in our native first language, that further decreased the need for using TTY. 
In addition to that, things like social media brought on new platforms for communication and connection. and further sent TTY minutes in a downward trajectory with apps like Uber, other mobile apps like DoorDash and things of that nature, on-demand food delivery, on-demand services that are completely internet-based, the need for TTY steadily decrease. So technology has evolved. In addition to that, we've seen the traditional analog phone lines shift to digital lines. And as we know, TTY technology is not compatible with those digital lines. And on the next slide, we're gonna elaborate a little bit more on how this makes an impact. So when you look at the statistics based on this graph in the last 10, last 10 years, those households with a landline only, that yellow line represented there that have that traditional phone jack with no other digital or mobile technology is now roughly at about 5%. If you look at landlines with wireless, the red line, you've seen that also with somewhat of a steady decline. Then if you look at the blue line, which is people who are getting their telecommunication needs met solely through mobile devices, as the internet becomes more advanced with the advent of smartphone technology, with changes in how we just communicate in general and how we network, very different if you compare the past to now, and I'm sure in the future, it will be more and more wireless technology. That number has skyrocketed. So now we're focusing more on IP-based technology versus those old copper phone lines. Those are slowly but surely being replaced and being phased out. So once the TTY is no longer in existence, what are we supposed to do? Well, the advent of RTT technology solves that problem. Next slide, please. Now we're very excited to show you a demonstration. I can talk about it, but I think it's most effective for you to see it in actual time yourself in terms of what it looks like. So this is showing two phones connected via RTT. So this is RTT to RTT end to end. Next slide, please. And you can also press play. All right, did everybody see that? Next slide, please. All right, so now you've had an opportunity to see what this technology looks like in real time. We wanna talk about some of the differences between RTT technology and TTY technology. As we mentioned before, it functions on an IP-based platform. It also allows you to type simultaneously. You can see people self-correcting in real time. 
as they delete, maybe change their message. It very much mimics a regular conversation. One thing that wasn't in the demo is that you can also use audio and text capabilities simultaneously with RTT, which is amazing. TTY, of course, doesn't have that capability at all due to the nature of the device itself. So this gives more access, which is very, very exciting. In addition to that, you have additional characters. It's not a limited capacity when it comes to characters. You have things beyond just the regular alphabet. So those expanded character sets are nice. Next slide, please. Now an additional comparison between text, SMS, and RTT technology, because they do look similar. Again, some of the same issues, the ability to converse simultaneously, to interrupt, to interject. However, currently, RTT does not have the ability to support sharing of photos and GIFs. Okay, that is the wireless carriers that need to upgrade their IP based network in order to allow for that to happen. So it's on the part of the carriers right now that doesn't permit that, which is interesting. I mean, imagine using a GIF when you're talking to an interpreter. Just imagine that particular station. It's just a fascinating thought. In addition to that, one of the significant points about RTT is the ability to connect with 911, to connect with an operator, a dispatcher in real time. So as you're typing, if something were to happen that inhibits you from completing that sentence, the operator on the other line, the 911 dispatcher will see that. They will see the last character you type and have more information than they would if it was a text message where the person didn't get to press send. This could be life-saving. Next slide, please. Okay, at this point, I'm gonna turn things over to David. Roughly 30 years ago, the groundwork had been laid for RTT to get to where it is today. This started in Europe in the 1990s and researchers from all over the world devoted their combined attention to um, getting a new method in place to allow for texting to happen in real time through the internet. A few countries in Europe um, began actually using that technology that permitted um, that kind of texting. It would have been Denmark, Sweden, and I believe it was the UK. That really didn't propagate to the United States for some time later. When RTT first got going, there were new standards that had to be created. And so again, a group of international researchers got together and they decided on the standard, which was now called RFC 4103. That is the RTT standard and anyone can use that. It is an open source a uh, bit of information. And any number of technological projects from the, the IM client, you saw the old fashioned app called ja Jabber that we used to use. Also, um, 911 started to use that sometime following that. As it got underway in the United States, they saw Bought It was there for telecommunications. But it wasn't until they came to the realization and clarified the fact that bought out um, or TTY two-way communication did not jive well with internet connectivity. And certainly with Wi-Fi, they observed that the among the carriers, AT&T, Verizon, T-Mobile, they observed that they simply were not able to complete um, a TTY conversation adequately in an IP-based network for Wi-Fi purposes. So that being said, once the ADA was passed, there was a requirement, as you recall, 
to support TTY communication throughout. And there wasn't any exception really for telecommunications in that way, but we, we came to the realization as an international community that as we transfer to digital, the analog systems that were codified were not served. So for the BADA world, I don't, Bodo world, I don't know if I can count whether it was 40 or 50 years ago, it would have been patented in what, 80, 1874? I think it was a time for change. And AT&T had had their uh, fill and they petitioned the FCC. Sorry about that, I pressed the wrong button. Um, they, uh, they petitioned the FCC in 2015 um, if they would not allow the TTY support to be sunset in favor of RTT because TTY simply couldn't survive in that environment. And the FCC solicited feedback and comments, and they were flooded with comments in agreement that um, TTYs can't be supported on Wi-Fi networks. So in time, the FCC did agree and set forth a new order with some subparts rules to it that among the carriers, among the manufacturers of the particular devices and among the developers of the operating systems, all three of these cohorts would be would work in concert to get us to the point where we could make RTT usable. So as the new rules from the FCC went into place for RTT, also some accessibility standards would begin to unseat the TTY and Apple was the first in December of 2017 to add RTT to iOS 11.2. So that means if you've uh, kept your iPhones up to date, you might already have RTT functionality on your smartphone. You might have had it for upwards of three and a half years by this stage. Android um, version 9.0 followed suit a few months later and RTT is a capability there. Let's take a look at the next timeline. As I made mention of those three cohorts, three groups that required to support this effort in concert, um, we saw the carriers. These are nationwide folks of which there are only four, AT&T, Verizon, T-Mobile, and Sprint, soon who the latter two will be of course, of course more merged in practice. In 2017, the FCC rule stated that among those large nationwide carriers, there had to be an availability to download an app for RTT or some kind of plugin that would go on the device itself that would enable RTT. That was for uh, the December, uh, the latter part, the 31 December 2017, at least one phone model they had to offer with that. So for Apple, uh, as I've mentioned, they've taken care of that. And Android has LG, Samsung, all sorts of manufacturers that they support. And among the manufacturers, they had to have at least one model that supported RTT functionality or um, some kind of wireless IP-based voice service. And one year later, in December 2018, that last week, well, they made that mandatory. And I believe, if I may, I'm going to consult my, my notes. One year following that, in 2019, the wireless carriers, the big four, um, that had been required to support one device of RTT in 2017, um, were now required to support, support RTT going forward for all newly manufactured, newly sold, devices after December 2019. So that was a long time coming, certainly before COVID. And let's take a look at where we, where we stand next. So of those big four carriers, 
There are lots of wireless services available throughout the country. However, there are lots and lots of smaller um, providers who provide these kinds of services, tier two as they are known. They're often local, they're often regional. Well-known ones you might know um, are Cellular One, Cricket, also the, the little guys that you know in your local areas. So they're required to support RTT as well. And they do so through, again, either an app or a plugin. Tier one, their deadline was 31 December, 2017. For the tier two smaller carriers, it was summer of 2020, just past what, four months ago now. And for all of the carriers that are out there, they have to, going forward, for newly manufactured, newly sold models, come, come summer 2021, this summer, have to be RTT enabled. So come this summer, the big and the small carriers, tier one and two, are required to support RTT, according to the rules at the Federal Communications Commission. Okay, let's move on. There's a lot of text here. I'll pause and allow you a moment to review it. In this time, one thing that's kind of caught our attention is personally is important to me is to make sure that things happen in concert. The RTT relay release needs to be seen across the board and we're missing a critical part of this sort of three-part agreement which is that 911 call centers have to work in concert with these players as well and it's important that we build out the technology in a future proof it so that our customers will be confident at the outset it is ultimately critical i think what's paramount is that we can cover a little bit of what we see coming for 911. There is good news on the horizon. And it's not going to have to be a workaround. NG911 already supports real time text and instant messaging. This is already collapsed within their local catchment areas when they place a call that's RTT and you move around. It can update your location. It is truly next generation technology that currently exists for NG911. But the most recent version, which is I3, the I3 standard, is a particular technology that allows PSAPs throughout the entire country the newer and better way to communicate with people during an emergency call. This is simultaneous text, character by single character, reading out across the screens. Also audio, and this is quite amazing. It's not the same as text to 911. Let me emphasize that. Text to 911 functionality behaves entirely differently than what we're talking about here. RFC 5103, which has collapsed into the NG911 standard, indicates that any PSAP from a few years ago should be already elevating their infrastructure to NG911. So RTT calls inbound would be allowed on that standard. This is good news. There have to be um, money and effort put toward this requirement. It's different again from text to 911. So we're transitioning from E911 to NG911, which is truly astounding, uh, the, the amount of work that would have to be put in. And let's move on to the next slide, if you would, please. And a few months ago, it would have been the middle of January 2021, an industry group that you very well know called NINA the National Emergency Numbering Association, NENA. 
the self-same group that would have coordinated NG911 itself um, got together and convened a working group to develop a guide for PSAPs throughout the country who would like to learn more about how to stage their operations to get ready to support RTT. And the first step is to look into the information, the technology that exists and exactly how it would look on your console, just from the point of view of a user and the forms that one would need to submit to a carrier to request that RTT inbound be enabled. Everything you need to know, Scoop to Nuts, is in this guide. And I'm very happy to share either the link or if you'd prefer an, e an email attachment PDF of this document, you could certainly see Nina's website and look for the RTT um, section there and you'll be able to see that. And that is courtesy of the RTT working group at Nina. Next slide, please. Take it away, Travis. Certainly. So again, all of this is very, very exciting to see all the possibilities, and I'm sure everyone can see the potential here, how RTT is going to transform the relay industry across the board. It's very, very exciting. And when you think about it, everybody has a phone, the majority of which are already have built in native RTT, not all, but the majority of which. So for all intents and purposes, it can save time when you're talking about things like equipment distribution, the training and the education piece that comes with that. It's much more efficient. It's much more faster. It's easier to pick up. It's more intuitive. In addition to that, it can serve a variety of dis different disabled community groups, cognitive disabilities, deaf blind, those with speech challenges, so forth and so on. It's able to accommodate all of these different constituencies. There are several projects that we're currently working on with our deafblind community incorporating RTT. We have other ones using RTT and RCC technologies. So remote conference captioning with RTT at the same time, we're experimenting with that now. So the possibilities are really limitless and they will come on board with time. And as David mentioned, emergency services, absolutely paramount, life-saving process for us in order to get this up and running and online. Now, some people might have some questions and it might give you pause when we think about the cost and what the rates look like. In the state of Maryland, our price point is exactly as the same as the cost per minute for the traditional TTY services. Okay, it's within our TRS budget. So that makes the transition all the easier. Again, I do want to clarify, the aim is not to replace TTY immediately. It's more of, for lack of a better word, a merger. It's an evolution. Okay. There's going to be certain groups of there, certain groups out there who still utilize TTY technology. However, eventually it will sunset, but there's not going to be a specific death date, so to speak, for TTY. It's going to be a slow, gradual phase out. And it might always linger, but we're going to add on the TTY technology and make it as smooth as transition as possible. Let's see what we have next. Okay, so we've recognized significant challenges, as David mentioned, and I think he can speak to that. We'll turn things over to him. Sure, absolutely. Thank you, Travis. I'll give you just a few seconds to look over this slide. I know it's got quite a bit of information there. So <laughs> just as when you have an infant and they start to eat things on their own independently, the goal of that, of course, that's the ultimate goal. But before that happens, you have to suffer that pain of teething, right? It's, that pain is worth it. 
because eventually you're going to use those teeth to eat for the rest of your life independently. That would be my analogy in terms of what we're experiencing with RTT. The rules, as mentioned, have been established. The technology itself is there. The theory and in process and in reality has proven to be a little bit more complicated. Okay, And so the teething pains, for lack of a better word, that we've experienced essentially revolve around implementation. The different carriers, their technology barriers from carrier to carrier, and unfortunately, they need to upgrade all that technology in order to have RTT work collaboratively. As of right now, its appearance and its behavior is very different carrier to carrier. In our new relay contract, which we've had for the last year, which has language for RTT, that that went online March of 2020. So I would say it's just about our one year anniversary of that. Since the day of the implementation of that contract, we have been working diligently, having conversations with the carriers, having conversations with our relay vendor, discussing what we need in order to move forward with this. And the needs are great. Two things we noticed from the onset. The first is that the behavior of RTT, which we call the user experience or the UX, is not standardized across carriers. Some of the reasons behind that include, for example, FCC allows for an app or a plugin as well as native to the iOS or the platform of that particular user. So therefore, the user's experience is really going to depend on whether they have an over-the-top app they've downloaded from the store or whether it's native to the iOS or the Android operating system, that makes a difference. And the experience between iOS and Android is also significantly different. So it's not perfected yet. A carrier such as Sprint um, might not provide that kind of access to their customer base just yet, but in some enclaves, however, there are spots where RTT is enabled, but in many places it is not. So it is by far not yet uniform. And we're getting there slowly but surely. I think the second problem that we've observed is the level of confidence, such as we have uh, mentioned earlier, as this is rolled out, you need it to be full featured and reliable so that ultimately folks can speak with their friends, family, and coworkers so that when an emergency should befall them, then they're ready to use it. They don't wanna to have to be scrambling to use some different foreign system when they're in an emergency. In Europe, some customers have um, many years of experience with RTT. This is not the case in the United States among uh, users. Frankly, there are many, many people, most the majority have never used them. As you saw this demonstration today, um, we work with State Relay, we work in the industry, but for many of us, we're not technically savvy on the latest and the greatest of what RTT is. And the fact that maybe it's even on your phone and you had no idea that it was available um, since 2017, 2018. And I understand that. So let's see the next slide, please. I'll allow you a few seconds to review that before I start. Among the difficulties that we have observed um, has been after we've spoken with the carriers, one thing that has been become abundantly clear is it's not just a switch you can flip and allow RTT inbound calls to come in. You really have to build it out uh, from an infrastructure perspective first. And you know very well that the FCC rules were in place in 2017, which required carriers, tier one, I should say, carriers, to support RTT. That was, what, four years ago. But what we have learned is that carriers, regardless, uh, are having 
similar problems and they continue to depend on legacy systems and not implement um, the RTT as it should be. So they will continue to use an 800 number network um, on the legacy uh, network. So this is a problem. This is a problem because when you call 711, for example, in a given state, that the number is initiated and translated to a toll free number. And that has been in place for several reasons for quite a while. And that's a long standing, probably even since day one of the requirement for the relay, um, that that would be the case. So that is a legacy holdover. But that holdover is ultimately a barrier to RTT because 711 um, is not going to be able to connect in the same way as an RTT to our relay center. So it's on the part of the carriers that there has been uh, modest progress relative maybe one carrier to another, maybe some are doing better than another. But before we have full-fledged confidence in a rollout of RTT, among all carriers, there has to be a common experience. 711 has to be passed through to the relay or 911 has to be passed through with no problems whatsoever. And we see that for RTT, it is an IP based technology. So it is a text over IP technology, if I can say that. And when you initiate an RTT call, you begin by way of your 10 digit phone number. You are dialing a call as though it were voice minutes. For those of us who has a, have a cell phone plan, um, you know, beginning in when I was 14, I even got one, but I didn't have to get a voice I, in iOS 14 it was uh, the fact that you didn't have to have a voice plan. So there are lots of people who are used to that. So you can take an RTT call because you're IP based, but you cannot initiate one because that is uh, voice minutes, not data. And, and so the plans out there are popular without voice because they are less expensive. And if you do have a voice component, it just lies fallow and you never use it. So why bother? But in the end, this prevents you from initiating or completing an RTT call. So we've talked about our experience and the fact that it has to be more uniform. That is one example that we need to kind of unpack. And by way of information, the FCC rulemaking process for RTT is by no means done and dusted. They have set a rule in 2016 for um, and by way of clarification, there are lots of other rules and comments that followed, but there needs to be something new that includes uh, the relay service. So we will have further opportunities going forward to make changes and approach the commission for how the rule needs to allow for uh, these voice plan barriers to be solved. And there are many places around the country, many pockets where there is a lack of access, no 4G, no, no data, no cell towers, um, even no landlines in some places. So you, RTT would be an utter impossibility in those cases. And RTT is really going to be the new, next wave, the next generation of technology um, that unseats that which has been embedded in those rural areas. And it really is just been a long time coming. Next slide, if you would. Okay, so now this brings us to where we are, 2021. Where will we be moving forward? And as straight state relay administrators, what can you do? We've noticed several questions in the chat. We will be addressing those at the end of our presentation. Many people are asking for additional information, the PSAP form, toolkit, so forth and so on. And again, we will be sending that out. I'm gonna post that in the chat as we speak. There are three documents in this. When you click on the link, you'll be able to download them, 
download them all. You will have a copy of this PowerPoint presentation. You will have a roadmap in terms of what you can do moving forward, and it will also provide you with a toolkit, resources and additional information to help guide you through the process and navigate bringing RTT online just to be a time saver to you all. Now, back to our PowerPoint. As I mentioned earlier, I encourage everyone to educate yourselves about RTT, understand what the technology looks like, how it would be beneficial for you in your state, how to adopt and implement the process moving forward. Maybe include it in the language of your next RFP so that it speaks to having RTT technology. To my knowledge, to our knowledge, the state of Maryland was the first state to adopt RTT Relay as part of its contract, one of the first. And with that has come the growing pains and learning curve that you would expect. So we need everybody's voice to join with us, to reach out to the FCC and to reach out to those carriers to really start spearheading this and move it forward a little faster because we keep getting further and further from the deadline that was set by the FCC and we need to hold them accountable. So I encourage you in each of your states, work also with your local PSAPs, your 911 call centers, and encourage them if they haven't already to upgrade to NG911 from E911 so that they can start accepting those RTT pass-through calls as well as text to 911. That's particularly significant. So I encourage you all to do that and serve as educators to your local PSAPs. David? Just as Travis said, the level of support will carry down to the state administrators, of course, who can learn more about RTT and push it from your end. I think that's vital. Maryland being the first is no cause for celebration. Being the first quite often means that you are the one who has to iron out all the kinks and you get all the what we'll call learning experiences. And we have learned in the past year, navigating this process of dealing with carriers, with PSAPs, and sharing that information with you, we hope will better prepare you, and give you a head start on your journey and learn from our work and from our frustrations. No, go ahead, continue. On the part of the PSAPs, so the 911 folks, let's pivot into that direction. There are things that can be done, such as starting to look further into the readiness guide, which I referenced from Nina. And really everything is there from scoop to nuts that you might need. and Everything that you would use for training purposes, for your telecommunications, people in the seats, all of the technology stuff that they would need to know um, to get things done on the IT end, and also all the forms that you would need administratively to fill out and submit if you would like a carrier to send you inbound RTT calls into your call centers. Also, if there were not for NG911, well, the transition from E911, then of course you would see some gaps if you still had to make the transition to NG911, but NG911 should collapse everything into what you would ultimately need to support RTT. So I guess we can wrap up at this stage. Absolutely. Moving forward, I do notice there are some questions. Oh, one second. Let's hold questions until after we do the, the most exciting setup piece. So now, like I mentioned earlier in the beginning of today's talk, not all phones have RTT native, not all models. The majority, yes. But there are still some, perhaps if it's a local regional carrier, you might not be able to enable it. If you don't have a voice plan, you also might not be able to enable it, which does pose some challenges. But how to enable it on your phone? We're going to start with iPhones, the iOS operating system. If you go into your settings, go to your accessibility tab, enter that, and go to where it says RTT slash TTY, click on that, and then just toggle that switch to turn it on. Then. When you go to make a phone call, you would do that. You would go to the regular icon or app for that, and you will see an additional icon for RTT, which you would then click on to initiate a call. Now, let's see how we do it on an Android phone. Next slide. Okay, okay so you can see it's pretty similar. You go into your settings, go to accessibility, 
you will then see real-time text down towards the bottom of the available features. Click on that, and then you will click on Always Visible, that option. And then it's enabled. So relatively easy to set up and turn on. Of course, it then takes some practice and experience, but you will have the opportunity to reach out to maybe other state relay providers. If both of you have that technology enabled, it gives you the chance to really experience it. Okay, so one person saying that it says not visible. It might be due to it being a regional provider. Your area might not have it. It might be due to not having a voice plan. There's a variety of different factors that might make it inaccessible. Again, as we mentioned, the experiences vary. They are not standardized at any point. So we want to work together to change that. We have the power in our hands right now to really push for this change and for this revolution. Let's see what we have next. All right, so this brings us to our question and answer period. So to review, go ahead, any questions you have, feel free to put them in the chat box. I will repeat the question for the benefit of the audience. All right, so to get us started. Okay, I see Holly Bice. She's responding to some questions. All right, David, would you mind coming up? I'm going to reiterate the question to you. David, would you mind joining me? Absolutely. OK, fantastic. Rebecca, would you mind pausing the share screen for one minute? Just hit pause. Okay, much better, a little larger. We've consolidated our screen real estate there. Okay, so the question is, does the RTT have the function to easily transition between RTT and traditional texting, SMS texting for lack of a better word? Does it have that capability or what's the difference? This is David speaking. In answer to that question, I suppose I would need clarification. Do we mean within the same tool toggling back and forth or within the same call? Or for example, are you going on the same device between RTT and TTY calls? I mean, I guess I can answer both. How's that? So if you toggle back and forth, uh, it's not going to allow you to to do that on the same call. In other words, you have to initiate the call as a certain type of call, and it will be answered as a certain type of call. So in the handshake is where you kind of set in stone whether or not it's an RTT or a TTY call. You can't toggle back and forth within a call. But from one call to the next, you certainly could that handshake makes that determination whether or not it will be completed as a TTY or an RTT call. And you have the way, a way of enabling RTT, or you can just have a sort of um, single source way of TTY to use that, depending on your rationale. I hope that answers your question. All right, so the next question is from David Wise from California. And his question is, my understanding is that the FCC doesn't have jurisdiction over the PSAPs. Some PSAPs have already stalled NG911 technology platforms to support these RTT capabilities. Will the DOJ mandate PSAPs to implement NG911 technology platforms? And if they will, what is the timeline for that? That is a great, great question, David. And it's a complicated answer, I'll be honest. But yes, you are correct in that the FCC does not have authority to mandate for PSAP operations and certainly what kinds of calls they will support, what kinds of technology they will use. It's pretty much um, 
you can't really tell PSAPs what to do outside of their very narrow purview of taking and placing calls. So it is a DOJ matter. And as you know, it was, gosh, it was already been, David, it's already been 11 years now. It was 2010, if memory serves, that the DOJ put out an advance notice of proposed rulemaking in A and PRM. And that would update their rules with respect to PSAPs and the necess necessity of supporting access to 911. That was 11 years ago. And it has lain there, I believe, I will say eight or nine years since. And they finally, it laid there for eight or nine years. And they finally decided that there was nothing that was going to be done. And so the answer, I suppose, is it does not look like there's promising movement. And I'm sorry, David is pixelating and pausing, freezing for the interpreter. But as we pivot, we can certainly take on the responsibility for ourselves of what we can do. Okay, next question. Oh, bear with me. <laughs> A lot of questions are coming up. So we have time for two more questions and then we are gonna have to wrap up to so just to let everybody know. Has anyone successfully made RTT calls to Relay from an iPhone or an Android? Seeing none. Yes, again, state of Maryland, we have everything in place, but still, to our knowledge, nobody. So that's significant. You know, this is David speaking. If I could, allow me to clarify as well that if you go ahead and initiate, enable RTT on your phone and in turn place a 711 call using the RTT call option, what would happen in practice is that you will connect to a TTY modem pretty much universally. That's an issue that we have had historically with 711 making the translation to the 800 number. That being said, right now, voice over IP or text over IP as it stands does not support um, on the part of the carriers that translation to 800 numbers. Not yet, but our understanding is that it's coming up. Once we um, add that on the part of the carriers, I don't know about everyone else, but I want to say that, Travis, correct me if I'm wrong, early 2021. We're predicting late later on this year. Late, yeah, later in this year. Okay, so the last question is again from Cynthia, saying you mentioned earlier about RTT apps. So my question is, does the app itself have the built-in ability to transfer back and forth between RTT and traditional text, either during a call or before the call is made? And I can answer that. I can speak to that. The quick answer is no. RTT initially was a standalone app. It wasn't native to the phone. Now, as time has progressed, apparently all the carriers haven't updated those said apps because it is now they're relying on the iOS, the native built-in RTT within their systems. And so within the call, you can't transition between traditional text and RTT. Now to let you know, I predict that everyone will have RTT capabilities, hearing or deaf, and they're going to have that ability to, in mid-text, transfer. I agree. I think that's the future, and I think that will be coming eventually. Now, unfortunately, we do need to wrap up to let everybody know that we will be sending out the recording of today's talk with captions as well as with a transcript. In addition, you will get the PowerPoint slides and the toolkit with the roadmap. So all of that will be shared with everybody. I'm going to post the link one more time in the chat for anybody who might have missed it. For those who want to access those items, there's the link so you can download the PowerPoint and those additional documents. I will also be sending all the information once it's curated. And the PowerPoint will be sent in addition to the recording. And that'll be sent via a variety of outlets. And if you want more information or you'd like to reach out directly, we're going to ask Rebecca now if she wouldn't mind sharing our slide deck again. Yes, the captions will be on the recording for the person who is asking. Yes. Okay. Yes, it's all very exciting. Okay. And if we could just go to our concluding slide, please. Yes. So 
we want to revolutionize the world together. We have the power in our hands in this moment in real time, so to speak. So we want to do this together, support each other and push for this. So please reach out to me and David. We need all the state support and we're more than happy to do a deeper dive with any of you on this. We're very, very excited. We're passionate about this process and we want to see it through to fruition. So next slide, we'll give you our contact information so you know how to reach us. Okay, so this is how you can reach out if you'd like to connect to either of us. Thank you so much, everyone, for being everyone. here. Thank yes, you, thank indeed. you so much. We appreciate it. And everybody have a fantastic rest of your week. And thank you so much for coming today. We appreciate having you. Okay, and at this point, we're gonna end our recording. Thank you again so much.